everybody! I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp, and today I would like to show you how you can paint this gorgeous sunset scene over a field of lavender. It's really fun. I'm going to explain every part of the process to you, and to help me do that is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He's going to make sure that when I'm talking about or demoing a technique, the camera's pointed on what I'm doing so you can really, really recreate this for yourself at home. Now, you can come by and do just this single painting. Maybe you just love lavender and you came by to paint lavender, and that is totally fine. But I'd like to point out that this is also part of a 30-day painting series that I certainly invite you to partake in. Get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me, Thiesel, right now. We're going to paint this. Today's color palette will be Naples Yellow Light, Pad Yellow Medium, Thalo Green, Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Blue, Burn Sienna, Deoxazine Purple, Quinacridone Magenta, Cad Red, Mars Black, Titanium White, and this extra paint here is also Quinacridone Magenta because we're going to be using it on the background. So for step one, we want to paint the entire surface of our canvas with Quinacridone Magenta. Pretty simple, pretty quick. Let's do that right now. I'm going to get my brush. I'm going to load it up and paint my canvas. So when your entire surface is painted this bright pink and it's completely dry, you want to take your chalk and ruler tool and create a one inch grid across the whole surface. And I do that by measuring out every inch and then creating vertical and horizontal lines. This will help match me up to the reference. Once the grid is entirely laid in, you're going to want to label it one through eight across the top and one through eight across the side. Gridding works in a very simple way. You use a reference that has an equal measurement to the canvas that you're transferring onto. And all you do is draw what you see in each individual square, which is why we number them. So if I come over here to square two and I'm talking about the most distant hill, all I have to do is follow the line that begins here and exits there. I can see that hill continues to come down here and exit there. And this can continue all the way for what I see in each of the squares. So we're going to do this for the whole uh, we're going to do this for the whole piece. You use your reference image and follow along with me. Okay. So when you have your intersecting lines, your perspective sketched in, and the contour lines of your major objects like your mountains, I do like to make a little extra mark here so I remember that that's not uh, going to be the flowers, that's going to be the one row of dirt that we see. That's all you've got to do for step one. We're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to paint in that sunset sky for step two. Once you have that in, we're going to start putting in our wonderful sunset. I really like doing these types of sunsets. I'm going to begin this with my number eight cat's tongue, just because it's going to be easy for me. I'm going to begin layering in the bright bit of light where the sun is going to be the brightest and warmest, and then we'll continue to cool out the sky as we paint out. Now, there's a lot of ways that we can do this. I'm going to actually start with my cooler colors first. So let's take a little bit of our ultramarine blue and some of our quinacridone magenta, and you're gonna see that makes a very specific type of purple. You can always get a little white into it to see it. And we're gonna come out here and start to paint this over the pink. Now what's great is that because there's pink underneath and this is a bit transparent, we get kind of a nice glazing effect. Mm. It's very dark. I could have done dioxazine purple, but I wanted to do this. So that I could keep kind of blending and, and moving some of this out. I'm coming in from, and I'll go ahead and take the purple all the way up over the top. I'm coming in from these sides because I'm wanting to show where our focal point of the light is. Now, as we're moving forward, I might take a little bit of my quinacridone and, and maybe even some of my cad red together, add a little bit of white to it. And come along this far edge of the mountain line, creating a, a bit of a lighter area. You can see me blending that in. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Just blending that in. And 
take that over here and maybe up the sides. And I love the layering effect of all of this. Now the next fun color I'm gonna put in there is I do take the quinacridone and the cad red mixed together and I'm gonna add it into the Naples yellow light which is gonna give me this really incredible pink color. And I can start brushing out and almost, you know, it's like a cat's eye lens is on there. Fish eye lens? Fish eye lens, that's it. <laughs> Fish eye lens, thank you, babe. <laughs> Too many cats on the brain. Too many cats on the brain. I'm gonna continue bringing this <laughs> and with a little more yellow forward, but it's still into the pink. A cat's eye lens. That'd be like a little slit you look through. No. And you can see I'm just adding little bits of wispy, thoughtful, hmm. Rinse, 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 rinse. Surprisingly enough, what we're going to do next is take a little bit of our cad red over to our cad yellow and make a very nice bright orange. I love the bright orange that these two make together. I'm going to come here and blend that in. You can see I'm just stroking in a curve and a back and forth. Sometimes I think we overthink what we're doing on our skies a little bit. Let's bring a little bit of that orange kind of along the mountain line. You can kind of see where I touched that. Just saying, oh, that's a little more bright. And then continue to brighten that as we come forward. I'm not going to dry it yet, but I will have to soon just to make sure that as we come forward, stuff tends to pop a little bit more if mm. it blends out too much. But we can wait and see. Yep. I'm going to take a little line of that out. Notice that I'm trying to sort of create a little ombre of glow. See that um, ombre over there? Side brushing. You don't I'm mean side brushing. You don't mean ombre like dude. I'm gonna get a little of my Naples yellow into it because it really lightens the yellow and it doesn't change it um, into a peach. So that I can come over here and we're gonna talk about some distant little bits of something. Let's come right there. You can see it's lighter. That's not terrible. Now for the next little bits, I do want to dry this. Doesn't need a huge dry, just a little bit of a dry. We're gonna go ahead and rinse out. We're gonna get back into our very bright orange color, right? which is our cad red and our cad yellow. Let's add a pop of that bright and a red orange on the toe of the brush. I'm just talking about little kind of distant clouds that are floating in, aren't they? Mm -hmm. We're not having to say everything, we're saying some of the things. Not say everything, say some stuff. Say some. And a little bit of my cad yellow into my Naples yellow light. Makes a really interesting sort of fascinating little half tone there. Powerful mix. And I'm on the edge of my brush, sort of wiggling in a spot of focal light. Mm. Oh, we're done. This guy's looking pretty good. It is. Distant little, dark, interesting little sunset, doing little dark, interesting sunset things <laughs> as they do. You can always re pink up the sky anywhere you want to with the um, quinacridone and magenta and cad red mix. With that navel yellow, you can see them come here, and it's just real easy to get that pink back. If you need it anywhere. I just want to show you that. It's not necessarily to always do it. But it's just if you want more pink, you can put it back super easily. I'm going to rinse out. And I'm going to get into my yellow, just a bit of yellow, and my white. I'm going to come right here. Just touch a bit of yellow right there. That white and yellow. You can go ahead and even imply some on the toe of the brush little wispy clouds mm -hmm. that are white you don't want too many of them though you want just that see how that's just a gorgeous little glowing keyhole now yeah lovely along here and just that edge though because you really want this to feel like the focal point of the sun is glowing out 
That, my friends, is the step two. We go on to three. We're going to paint some of these back structures like the mountains and the trees coming forward. So you can see what we're coming back from the sky and moving our subject forward. Mm-hmm. For lavender. Whoop, whoop. Okay, I don't know why I did that. All right, I'll see you back for step three. <laughs> step three, let's put in some distant faraway mountains. Now, if you think back to the lesson where we did the gradated mountains, you kind of know a little bit about where we're going with this. I can always put a little bit of my magenta into this mix to kind of make it have a distant purple feel. Distant purple. All right? Mm-hmm. Because they're far away and they're distantly purple. Come along here. You can kind of come around. Here, maybe your mountain goes that high. I'm going to just paint that across. If I need more water, I dip the toe of my brush in just to improve flow. Sometimes all you need. I think I'm painting more precious around the side on this one than before, which is okay. I don't mind. A little more of my magenta. And I don't mind. I haven't noticed I haven't rinsed my brush out. I'm adding a little bit of my Naples Yellow because right there, it would be just a little bit warmer. Can you see that? It's a mm -hmm. subtle touch, but oh, it makes such a difference. And a little more. Where the sun hits things, it tends to light them. And I've got a little more Naples yellow. You can see this here. And let's come across the top just very lightly and imply some slopes that maybe caught the light. It's a little thing. It makes a difference. You know, you get a little white into it. And it's sort of fascinating because you think it would just gray it out in a way that wasn't fun. And yet, it's super pretty. Just the prettiest little hill. As the mountains come forward, they're going to get darker and darker, right? Mm. So you, know, you take a little bit of the magenta into your ultramarine, getting a darker mountain color. And the, I can add a little weight into it. The, um, I just want it to be significantly darker than the mountain behind it. Bring that around. These mountains, you know, they go beyond our canvas. That looks pretty good. My forward mountain, I'll take my ultramarine blue and my dock's purple. Hmm. Making the darkest of the mountains. And you can see creating a very distinctive line between this and that. And that's just kind of just something to think about, right? Yeah. They come forward, they're backlit, they're going to be darker. It's a thing that happens. So we've got, you know, distinct ranges. Mountain ranges are happening. These are great and I love them, but some stuff I want to do, I want to make sure that I show some highlights on these hills because they would be greatly impacted by the sunset. So I'm getting a little bit of my pink color here. I go ahead and brush that up this mountain. We need a little more white into it. I can get it. Get a little bit darker. So what you're adjusting for is that which is closest into the sun sunlight would be very warmed and brightened, and that which is moving away would be cooling, not as bright. A little bit of a little bit of a highlight that we caught there. Interestingly enough, on this dark purple one, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk even more with the Naples yellow and some white. I'm going to come over the top here where, you know, 
the light would definitely be catching it. More into the purple as it goes back. Just a little bit of a highlight. I'll mix on the canvas. But you can see that gives us some distinctive little zones. Now, something that you can do to keep those mountains kind of pulled apart from each other is I'm going to grab a little bit of my ultramarine. I'm going to come along the top of this mountain and just make sure that there's sort of a bit of a shadow happening there. And I can soften it by drying up my brush and kind of flicking up. See how we're just doing a soft? Mm. That's lovely. Good, good, good. That, my friends, is what you got to do for step three. We are building the beautiful landscape, I feel. Don't you feel, Don? I do. I feel like we're building a beautiful landscape. All right, I'll see you back here for step four. Four, four. So I'm ready for step four. I have to say, John, I'm pretty excited about how this little simple sunset just pop, pop, pops. And, and I hope that everyone kind of takes this as a personal skill in their art box for other things they do. I'm sure by Acrylic April, by the end of this, you guys are going to be like, la, 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 sunset. <laughs> mm. It's a hope. That said, I've got to do some distant kind of like greenery and bushes and trees. I think I may continue using my number eight cat's tongue, mostly because I'm being lazy. I'm going to get my <laughs> bird sienna. Sometimes you just don't have to change your brush is what it is. Mm -hmm. And if, if you need to change your brush, I highly recommend one does it. But if you don't need to, don't, don't trouble yourself with it. Now, this distant sort of greenery, you can kind of see me going up and down. I'm just going to try not to clone. What do you mean by clone? Repeat the same shapes again and again as if I have a cloning stamp in my photo editing tool that I'm just... Using copiously, mm. you, you know, because nature doesn't do that, mostly. Sometimes it could, but for the most part, it's not into that. I like to bring this dark color across and make sure that it's sort of like uneven. You can bring this around if you want. Now, once you have the deepest value of your distant trees going, you can take a little bit of your cad yellow, as you can see, and lighten that green. Now, look at the kind of top lines of these trees, and let's pick some leaves to make yellow. Certainly, everything on the top here would catch some yellow, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. We'd all have a little bit of that. Seems plausible and reasonable. A little bit of yellow in that distant... Distant world. You can see I'm on the side of the brush. I'm just tapping it up and down, creating these distant little kind of bushes. Cool. Huh? I say they really do just come to life out there. They do. Now I'm going to put a lot more yellow and even a little bit of my Naples yellow light into the green I already have. And here, let's touch just a few of these that would be really impacted by. I'm doing mm -hmm. this can be a little hard to learn at first because here's what you will accept my touched leaves. You'll be like, yes, that's good. They look like leaves. And then you'll look at your own perfectly fine touched leaves and go, it's terrible. It's not terrible. It is just fine. I, yeah, I totally can understand what you mean. But that's what happens. You know, like it's really easy to see what somebody else did well. And it's so hard to see what we do well. I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna over to my green. This time I'm going to mix stronger to the bias of green. I'm going to get my yellow into it. I make a brighter little area. And let's come along this back area and say that there is some fields or grass or something. Did that go? Yeah. In front of these that we are dealing with that our lavender is running into. Fun stuff. And guess what we get to do? where the sun would be hitting. Let's grab a little Naples yellow light and a little more cad yellow into the green, right? Just making it brighter. Let's come right here. And dust a little of that out. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Little touches. 
make a big difference when you're feeling something out. That is pretty great. That is, my friends, the background and the end of step four. Wow. I know. If this one is just like, may you paint all the lavender fields, and whenever you see a photo now, you're like, I paint all the things of this mm -hmm. that I want. big and small in all the ways, because you can. Yeah. You totally can, once you understand the process of construction. Now, uh, on step five, we're going to come back and start putting in the kind of dark values, maybe, or and some of the basic layout of our lavender, which is going to be really fun. So I'll see you for that on step five. Live alive. As we look at our fields of lavender, right, right about, you know, back here is sort of our vanishing point. I've got to put in my little dirt row. And I make my little dirt row a little bigger than I need it because I'm going to make some flowers grow over it. So begin with a little bit of your burnt sienna and get a little of your ultramarine and it's going to make a grayed out brown. I'm gonna come back here with that grayed out brown and I go ahead and I paint this forward. And yes, I'm going to be narrowing this so much, but putting it in more of this back here it'll get browner as it comes forward it's nice to have the dark value as you're needing, i hope you guys are having tons of fun i'm enjoying it are you enjoying it mm -hmm. this is quite a thing doing these like uh big art programs online and it's a lot of fun to do so now i have some brown i know where that is right yeah while that's having a bit of a think, I'm going to come add some dark values. And my dark values are going to be really essentially simple. They're going to be my ultramarine blue and my docks purple. We're going to come here to our distant line. Okay. And then this right here on the inside of that distant line. A little more than the other ones. I'll be adding lighter to that, but that one I want to do a little more distant. In front of this one. It's okay if it comes across here, don't mind. Just, you know. Now, on the big areas, you want to be like a little wider with the dark value as you come forward. And you can even go around if you'd like some perspective on your lavender traveling around your face. The other place I need a nice dark, the dark, dark values will be along here. Now, again, I will be painting over my line, but we're blocking in right now for step five. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a sense of where stuff is going to be. And you can see, like, right here, I've widened my strip, and then it tapers mm. up. So that's an important thing to do. Now, as we move over to this side, we're going to change where we see our shadow cast to there. How cool is that? Yeah, that's pretty good. Already, we kind of got rows of something doing mm -hmm. things. It's really fun. You can do rows of lots of things. Be like, I can do all the rows. Yes, you can do all the rows. There you go. And you can always carry these around if you want to. You don't have to, just if you want to. What? I know. It is fantastic. And that's really all I want to do in this step because that's let me put in that basic structure that all the rest of this fun lavender and everything is going to build on. You may want to come in, um, I think I'll hit it actually in step six where I refine the little strip of dirt a bit because if it rests a little, that's good. Go ahead and give your canvas a bit of a dry and I'll show you how to do step six. So 
So I'm going to start putting in some very rough and interesting lavender. I'm going to begin doing it with this number eight Cambridge because it's a nice bristle and synthetic brush mix. It's going to give me some nice, great scratchinesses. And let's go ahead and grab a little bit of our dioxazine purple and some of our quinacridone and a little white. That's some pretty expected purple, right? Mm -hmm. Back here. I'm going to go up and down. I have a soft edge. We're still leaving the darks. We're good, we're good, we're good, right? Nice little scrubbly in. You can use any brush you have. You're just scrubbing in how the rows are going to go. How the rows are going to go. Mm. All up to you. I don't know why I did that, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all up to you. How you make your rows. Is super true. And you know, it's good to just make sure. I like to make sure everything is sort of really purple to the back. I will continue to exaggerate the dark, darks and lights, but it's just nice for me to see it come in. I feel like I'm hearing a wiki, 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 woo. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense? A <laughs> little bit of water. And a loose does a nice big job. Always bring it around the side. Okay, that some of our pink is pe peeking through. We picked it because it would be the friendliest to be glowing through all the colors we were choosing to use. Get that in there, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure you got it around the sides where you need it, if you want it. I'm doing my sides very loosely painted. I'm going to rinse out, and while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and get back into my burnt sienna and my ultramarine blue. Now, I'm going to hit with a little bit of white, which you can see makes it a bit gray. And then back here, maybe get a little of that going. As I'm moving forward, add a little more brown. Now, the sides under the flowers are kind of dark. I got to make sure that that's there. Wiping off. I'm going to come in and get just a little bit of my, just my burnt sand. And you can see I'm just using this brush to sort of tap down and I'm lifting up and I'm making some very irregular little dirt marks. They're just fantastic. They just show up out of the blue. You can always grab a little bit of the red and yellow. You can come in here and start to highlight just a few of the little dirt marks. Popping it in a little bit. Doesn't go back too far because, you know, it's distant, it's grayed out. We don't see it as well. Mm. We're doing pretty darn good. Now, we're going to come back on step seven, and we're going to start putting in some of the things that we recognize really specifically as lavender shapes, which is the fun part of the painting. The whole reason we showed up today, right, was to paint the flowers. All the mm -hmm. rest is like, stuff I got to do before I paint the flowers. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm with you. Stuff I got to do before I paint the flowers. So now we're at the flowers. Which is fantastic. I'll see you back here for flowers. Flowers.
in the next part, I'm going to be making kind of brush strokes that mimic the shape of lavender a bit. And to do that successfully, I'm going to grab a uh, number six bright that's got kind of a smooth bristle set. This is a ruby satin. And we're going to start catching some highlights, talking about some lighter stuff, and really working the two, two kind of value sets that are going. So when you come here, I'm going to pull a little of my purple out, right? This is good purple. And let's get a lot of our magenta into it. And as I grab my white, I'll be working here, looking for that color. I'm going to come right here. And this here will just be kind of an up down stroke. If you can see that. Just keep it going. Now, the more into our direct eye line, right, the more you'll turn the brush to the side and start to kind of go, ooh. And the more I'm going to be like, oh, hey, this stuff has shape and falls over other, you know, itself and is a row that does some things. I can always grab a little purple if I need parts of that row to be a little darker. And then when I come through that, I'm going to come back, interestingly enough, with a little bit of my altering blue and my phthalo blue. Right? Mm hmm Let's come here and exaggerate this sort of interesting little shadow bit. And imply something distant. You'll see me wiping off on the towel if I feel like I have too much water on my brush. I'll wipe off on my towel dried out so I get a nice non-drippy coverage. And that's really paint by paint. Now as we come here, I may even get a little bit of my dots and phthalo blue involved. Pull it a few places through here. Starting to become the rose. Right? <laughs> he walks behind the rose. <laughs> Sorry. It's not really a lavender movie. <laughs> At all. I was actually thinking about uh, the Beatles song, Strawberry Fields. Oh, yeah. Th that's what this would be. So here, I'm going to start back here and we'll just sort of make that upward motion. But as we come through, we want to break up that line and say, hey, some of this is maybe bending over into our ground like it would. Very dark, right? Mm -hmm. Contrast, contrast, contrast. And again. That's sure we're finding these distant spaces. Always bring it around. If you want it around. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. In the center here, I'm going to rinse out really well. And let's start to do some similar stuff. I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo blue. It's okay if it gets into my dots purple.
just refining and shaping the shadows. The lavender itself will be a bit of the purple and quinacridone red. Add some white. It's okay that I'm going to pick up some color for my dark value. That won't hurt it. I'm layering. And even in this case, layering on the canvas, right, mm -hmm. is working out well for what I'm trying to do. And I'll kind of arc these over to kind of imply that there's a little hump shape. That makes sense. I like the sound where it makes little scrapey scrapes. <laughs> Very much. I like the scrapey scrape sounds a lot. And at this stage, we're just kind of getting these lighter values of purple in and talking a bit about shape and doing that through the whole sets of rows. It's like the architecture we're starting with, right? Yeah. And it's nice. Lavender, lavender. You do a lot of lavender? Do you? You do a lot of lavender. Kind of fun that, right? Yeah. I like it quite a lot. This is a good place to call this seven. And in eight, guess what we're going to do? Hmm. More of the same. Ooh. But with different colors. <laughs> More of the same, but with different colors. You will guess. I'll see you for step eight. So I'm going to put out. A little more quinacridone and I'm going to do some interesting mixes that are sort of unique to our palette for this project. I'm going to pull my quinacridone out and I'm going to grab a little dots purple into it. I do want to, I do want to mix this more to the to the quin than the dots and I'm going to come over and get some of my Naples yellow light of all of the amazing colors that I would be using. I'm going to come here And add a bit of that very carefully to my distant rows. If you need some white into it to lighten it, it is pretty easy to do. Right? So, like, if I come here and be like, oh, I need that to be lighter. Sometimes, you know, you got to take it down on almost the edge. More of those little brush strokes that are defining. You can always get more quinacridone into there. I really like getting more quin involved. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Just different tonalities, right? Not just one boring, uninteresting range of something. And 
and just pulling that open. You can see the strokes get bigger and kind of make little shapey marks. Mm -hmm. Adding some of this wonderful tonality into it. And more Quinn anytime I want. Fun, fun, fun. And yet, we are not done. Mm. So, what I want you to do, rinse out your brush really well, and you've got your uh, really nice thalo blue. Grab a smidge of your white. You want it to still be a fairly dark blue, but the light allows it to show a bit. And you're going to come here. Make sure that you're touching a little bit of shadow into those little rows. It works best if it's pretty dark. I don't want to take out my purple. That isn't going to help me. I just want that pop of color. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not going to help me. I don't know what it would help me do, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a strong statement. <laughs> and come here and kind of. And more of this over here, of course. <laughs> you can see in this particular case that Thalo Blue really pops over that purple, doesn't it? It really does. It creates another kind of cool feeling of shadow that's exciting and not boring. We're being super colorful. We're having a lot of fun. I hope you're having a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, hopefully John's having a lot of fun. Looking pretty good. Looks not bad. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to take a little bit of my Thalo green into my blue mix. And this gives me a um, turquoise. I'm going to get a small amount of white. And you can see that very distinctive turquoise mix happening. Oh, turquoise. Now, closer up and kind of through here, I'm going to kind of add something there. Fun. Mm -hmm. Or I feel fun. It feels fun to me. I'm just making that little sort of backward stroke. You have a little bit right here. Maybe a little bit there. Just just something. Now I've got this turquoise and I'm gonna take my brown into it. Make kind of this interesting sort of green. And here. More brown. Mark some little shadows on the ground. Now we have the basis of a lavender filled, and we could be done, but we're not. Because hmm. we're going to come back and add a dramatic set of lighting and colors that creates this keyhole of light coming across everything. It's really going to be exciting to our visual eye. Let's get dramatic. Let's add some lighting. Let's add some surprising colors, some pops of colors, some fun stuff. Let's be playful. I'm looking forward to it. Make sure you got clean water for this next segment because by now your water should have been pretty dirty from use. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start creating some lighter dramatic moments. Take your quinacridone and your cad red together, mixed stronger to the quinacridone, I feel, and grab a little Naples yellow. It's a fantastic color. And we're gonna come here. We're gonna be adding some of these mixes. Now, sometimes it'll be more quin, sometimes it'll be more Naples, but what we're trying to do is add some really cool little mixes coming through. More Naples yellow if you need to lighten it. You know what we do? Mm -hmm. 
and see how it do. So this is the tops of these flowers and they're getting lightened. I really like it. <laughs> Believe me, they're just like, they're very fond of all this fun that they get to have. They get to have all this fun and they're super excited about it. like to get into these playful colors because they make everything sort of pop and come together. It's the whole reason why we want to paint lavender anyways. Now I'm going to get some Naples yellow and a little more Quinn and some white. Well, that's quite dramatic, is it not? Let's come through here and say, a little bit this way and come up a bit, but you want to be like, more dramatic in certain areas. You can see that's already starting to lighten up some of the kind of lavender that we've got going on. Similar deal over here. Wow. Does pretty good, right? Yeah. We're not done though. Remember that turquoise that we made? Come here and get some turquoise going again. Great color. Get a lot of Naples yellow. You need a very unusual, super bright color. We're going to come in here. Even in our shadow, we're going to have a little drama. Not too much. Just something fun. Tap it out on a little ground there. And there should be a little bit right here. This is just a little bit of drama across the lavender. It's a great time even get a little bit of green kind of peeking in. So make some green. It's sort of up here close. It's just a mix of my phthalo green and my cad yellow. I'm going to put in a few. These will get disappeared in a second, mm. but it's just nice to show. Gives that deeper tone that these are some plants. Well, they and they have green, but you don't really see it until you're sort of on top of them. So you just get that in and then you can come back with your magenta and and hide it into the base. Wonderful. Nearly done. Last things we're going to do. We're going to take a little of our cad red and some of our uh, cadmium yellow. Let's find some distinctive spaces that I sort of pick up on that. A little bit down there on the ground, get more into our yellow. And what's dramatic about this is that because uh, the purple and the yellow are kind of contrasting colors, 
I need a little more red into it. Too yellow right there. So sometimes you'll be like, oh, that's too yellow. Just what? Guess what? You just come back with it on a little bit red. If it gets too yellow on you, you're free. When that's all done, I'm going to wipe off my brush. I'm not going to rinse it. I'm going to wipe it off. And I'm going to go ahead and get into my Naples yellow. Let's come in here and really... Just a few bits that caught this bit of light, right? Mm -hmm. Just a little. Can you see the drama? Oh, yeah. It's amazing. That's the drama. Wow. That's a little too dramatic, so guess what I do? Well, my cad yellow and kind of. Oh yeah, it's it's somewhat dramatic, but not that dramatic, yo. All right, dirt, take the drama down. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's fun to take a little cad right into it. Just fun. You just touch it and play with it and touch it and play with it and touch it and play with it. But what you should have in the end result is a lavender field in very dramatic lighting with light kind of skipping across the flowers and catching in a few places making you really feel the warmth of that sunset. What and you hopefully a set of skills that you're carrying forward into several other paintings. That was a lot of fun. Let's sign it. Yeah, I was going to say, what are you going to sign it with? Uh, it, that's a very hard decision here because there's a lot of colors going on. You know what I mean? And I want to mm. do something fun, but I also don't want to take too much away. We'll have to see how maybe this will do. All right. Ooh, that looks good. Sometimes I gotta thin my signature color with a little water. Oh, so there we go. We're just painting every day. That was delightful and lush and a lot of fun to do. I always love painting these little corridors of light. They make my heart feel happy. Hopefully you enjoyed painting your own corridor of light. I want to point out that if you love this and that was all you want to do, totally cool. But can I invite you to join us tomorrow to paint these two birds? I think you're going to enjoy them as well. They're fun. They're simple. They're colorful. And I'm going to explain every part of them. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.